Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Yaqat Zaman. Welcome back to 40 Hadith. Let me know in the comments what collection I should go through next. Let's see what you guys say, inshallah. Okay, mashallah, one of the brothers who's actually involved in the uh, com compilation of this uh, series has contacted me and, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, I was really happy and I've spoken to him about other collections and inshallah, I'm going to hopefully buy some more of these collections and then be able to go through them as well. But anyway, you guys still let me know what you collection you guys would like me to go through. So we're on hadith number 32. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ana ibn Amr radiyallahu anhuma qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iqra' al-Qur'an ma nahaka fa idha lam yanhaka falasta taqra'uhu rawahu al-Daylami fi musnad al-Firdaus Ibn Amr so this again both of these hadith I've looked them up and they're both Abdullah ibn Amr so I think there's a little typo here Ibn Amr radiyallahu anhu relates that uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite said recite the Qur'an as long as it prevents you from evil when it does not prevent you from, when it does not prevent you, you are no longer reciting it uh, as it ought to be recited, related by the element of this. Right, so this is the hadith. What is this hadith talking about? The hadith is basically talking about the concept of true recitation of Quran. So imagine, for instance, there are two people, right, there's two people, and both of them are reading the Quran. Okay, so both of them. Are reading the Quran, he reads the Quran as well, and he also reads the Quran. Both of them are reading the Quran. The difference being is that this guy over here he actually practices, he acts on the Quran, whereas this guy he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't act. So the hadith is saying that when a person is truly reciting on the Quran, reciting the Quran person who's truly reciting on the Qur'an is the one who acts upon the Qur'an. And the person who does not act upon the Qur'an, then he is not really reciting the Qur'an. Yes, he might be uttering words in the Qur'an, but the recitation that Allah wants, this is not the recitation. So ultimately, what do we learn from this hadith? We learn important point about the concept of what Allah wants from us in our religion. Our religion is about... Our religion is about embodying, practicing what we learn from the Qur'an. If a person, like the Qur'an says, a person, a scholar, who does not act upon what he learns, Allah says, he's like, the example of him is like a donkey and who has lots and lots of books on his back. Yeah, example of a donkey who has lots of books on their back. And ultimately, if you are spending your time, you are spending your time, and you are reading the Qur'an, but you are not acting upon the Qur'an, then this recitation, in fact, is not a recitation which will bring you closer to Allah. So imagine that a person spends so much time, and like in the last hadith we mentioned, some people complete the Qur'an once a month, some people complete it in 20 days, some people in even 7 days. But that person, is he really, is he really benefiting? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And this is something that we can only achieve once we start acting upon the Qur'an. How do we act upon the Qur'an? Well, we've said this many, many times before. Acting upon the Qur'an includes praying our salat on time, fasting, and the usual kind of things, being obedient to our parents, listening to our parents, helping our neighbors, and you know, giving to charity, having patience, having thanks, making thanks to Allah. Yeah, this is the true reality of recitation of the Qur'an. When those words of the Qur'an, they bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make you understand about the reason why you're reciting. This is what happens. Unfortunately, many times for many of us, people will focus on reading so much that people will think the most important thing that makes them Muslim is to read the Qur'an, even if they don't pray their five times salat, even if they don't fast, even if they, you know, might do other things which are uh, disobedient uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prioritization should be made to reading and acting. Now, what would this inevitably mean? I would say that this would mean that a person should read, learn about what you read, learn, what am I reading? If I read Surah Fatiha, 
What does Surah Fatiha mean? How should I act upon Surah Fatiha? How should I act upon Surah Baqarah? How should I act upon these different various chapters of the Quran? And that way you are not only reading the Quran, but you're also acting upon the Quran. Yeah, and this is why it's reported from some of the companions. They said, we learned Surah Baqarah in, uh, you know, we learned Surah Baqarah in several years. We took us several years to learn Surah Al-Baqarah, not because it was very long, but because it was the acting upon Surah Al-Baqarah, bringing it into your life. And this is something that we need to really focus on, I think, as Muslims, we need to really focus on because, unfortunately, many people are reading the Quran. They don't know what's happening in the Quran and they're not acting upon the Quran. And the Quran itself is the most a powerful way for you to get close to Allah if you do it properly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be able to uh, bring this into our lives. What I want you to do in the comments is, I want you to put in the comments, what was the last verse that you recited and you acted upon? What was the last verse that you recited and that you acted upon? Put in the comments, inshallah, and encourage other people as well. Zakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for watching this video. I hope to see all of you guys. If you guys are interested, please leave us feedback, get in contact with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair guys for all of your support. Without your support, I wouldn't have been able to produce the videos that I've put up on my YouTube channel. And there is so much more that I really want to do. And without the support of you guys who are patrons, generously supporting this channel i've been able to get myself a camera which as you guys can see the quality of this camera a mic system software i've been able to hire an editor so what do i want to do i want to make lots and lots and lots of more videos for beginners for intermediate advanced in the subjects like arabic and fiqh and hadith and tafsir and aqidah and all those other things as well and for this to happen again this channel needs support. So if you guys want to become patrons and support this channel, then check out the link below. Also, if you do become patrons, you'll have access to videos that I don't put up on my normal YouTube channel. So check that out, inshallah. And there's most other perks as well that you guys can uh, benefit from. And if you want to um, access uh, this channel through social media, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook page, and other things as well that you can visit. So Jazakumullah khair again guys. Thank you very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.